Welcome to week eight and episode six of the Bill Neese Coaches Show. I'm your host, Chip Pair. With us is Coach Bill Neese. And last uh, week, the Indians found themselves something we haven't been in a long time, and that is idle on a bye. Mm -hmm. uh, the Indians uh, actually were on the bye as the first round of the playoffs started. The Indians play the, play the winner of the Lima Senior Cincinnati Harrison game, which we will play and host Cincinnati Harrison after Cincinnati Harrison came from behind to win 21 to nothing. Or excuse me, they're down 21 nothing, end up winning 32 to 28. Coach, you were at that game. Um, I have to tell you, I have to ask you, what's the difference between watching a game live and watching a game on film? Well, I, the, you know, the biggest thing is just the you can see the emotion. You can see some of the reaction to the players. You can see the different things as the coaches are doing uh, in terms of adjustments, in terms of, of trying to do different things. And I think that's the biggest one. If you see a game actually even live, it's a lot better than just trading the tape. I know some people – I enjoy the trade tape because you can rewind it, rewind it, rewind it. But you don't get a lot of the flavor of what kind of tempo people are running. Uh, it's, it's hard to see the splits sometimes. It's Hard to see a couple of things, but I think when you get into that, it, it, it gives you a, a real good feeling of, of how the game's going. But before we get into the game and the Harrison, I have to ask you, how what was it like for you? I mean, it's your first Friday night in a long time where you haven't had to play or coach a game. Uh, was it was it a little odd being on the sideline yourself? It was. It was. It was. Everything was okay during the week because we had practice and we were scouting both teams. So we would come in and have our normal meetings. We tried to keep everything as routine as possible. And then Friday came and we got done with practice and for a split second no one knew what to do and then <laughs> we got in the car and went to Cincinnati and watched the game yeah so that that kind of made up for it I still got home at 11 o'clock on a Friday night so and, and I had been in a football game so nothing much had changed along those lines coach it was a, quite an exciting game uh, Lima was up as we were mentioning 21 to nothing uh, Harrison comes back and in the last literal their last offensive play of the game Harrison pulls out the win mm -hmm. um, so there was a lot of excitement uh, from your perspective, obviously we're going to see uh, a team that's feeling good about themselves coming to Alexander Stadium Friday. What can the Pickwick Indian fans look forward to seeing in Cincinnati Harrison? They don't know anything about it. We've never played Cincinnati Harrison. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the, the unique thing about the situation is that the three teams in our league that we're, you know, very familiar with, you know, us, Tip City, and Troy are all playing three teams from their league the same night. Tip right. City's playing Mount Healthy. The Trojans are playing Edgewood, and then we're playing Harrison. And uh, the big thing I think is is that is a, when you kind of look at our our league, everyone's similar on offense and defense. Everybody you know, runs a spread, does you know, does this, does this. These guys are all everybody's kind of unique. In fact, Harrison is a wide open throwing team that blitzes, twists, and stunts with man coverage on on, on, on a lot of plays. Uh, you go down and watch Mount Healthy, and they've they've got a couple different formations that, that we don't normally see and then Edgewood's a wing T team and plays like a 3-4 defense so it, it's different and in, in what we're seeing they've got a lot of really good athletic kids and they've got good schemes on both sides of the ball it's, it's probably the biggest thing that, that uh, the pickle fans are going to get out of it for, for, for us, obviously, it's it's a week off, and we've had a chance to kind of heal up and, and get ourselves back into a physical shape. Not that they weren't physically shaped, but we had some we had some bumps and bruises. Mm -hmm. um, what what do you see? We're going to be coming out on Friday night. No changes. We're going to continue to keep to do what we've been doing offensively and defensively, Craig? And yeah, and, and going into this uh, season, I uh, mean, you talked a little bit before, uh, even during the season, and one of the biggest things that I felt comfortable with is the fact that we had – more depth. I know we've got really good, you know, some really outstanding players this year, but I think we have outstanding depth that we haven't had in the past. And so if we get somebody hurt, we, we've got people that can go in there. We don't have to go manufacture, you know, somebody to go in. And as a result of that, I, I really felt good this week of getting some kids healthy, continuing to have that depth, saying, okay, this kid's been able to play a couple weeks here. Now we got this starter back and, and, and we're in good shape. We can do some other things there. So I think that was probably the, the biggest thing we took out of the week. You were talking about routine and, and, and getting lifting last week in the show. You talked about everybody was lifting all week, and, and you were able to do some things that you didn't typically do, and you kind of in, implemented your summer workouts. Uh -huh. Now we're back into uh, the week of routine. What was practice like tonight and, and getting that mindset ready for a game? Well, practice was definitely way more uh, intense, way more upbeat than it, than it was last week. And I'm not saying it wasn't bad last week. It's just, you know, we went out and practiced. 
and you know we didn't know which which uh, which pieces of information we were supposed to be keeping. I mean, are we supposed to be keeping the Lima Senior stuff? We're supposed to be keeping the Harrison stuff. And again, we tried to just keep everybody's minds working in the same spot and uh, worked on a lot of conditioning, the biggest thing. And uh, so uh, tonight when we come out on the field, it's a whole different deal. I mean, we know this is, when we, when we say kickoff team, we know, okay, this is our return. When we say punt, okay, this is our punt block. And everybody's got it down. They've already been in meetings and everybody's already covered the headboard part of it. And now, you know, it's not like, you know, I think one time last week we, you know, we called for the Lima senior stuff and we, it, we couldn't find it so we had to do the Harrison stuff right. just things like that you know this, that wouldn't happen this week well, let's talk a little bit about Harrison, and, and I know you talked about their defensive schemes, and they throw a lot of different things at you, but let's talk a little bit more defensively. What will we see from them Friday night as far as defensively more specifically? Well, more specifically, they're an even front defense. I think a defense that people would be most familiar with would be maybe the Stebbins defense, only a little bit more man coverage. Okay. Uh, a, lot, a lot of outside linebacker blitzes, a lot of, you know, like I said, twists and stunts, moving people in and out. At one point against Lima Senior, they had everybody on the defense standing up. Mm. No one's in a stance and they kind of shifted back and forth and moved a little bit. So we're going to have to, the good thing is, is, uh, is uh, almost all of our offense is predicated by a lot of rules, by a lot of, uh, you know, mental process. And we've gone through a lot of, of, of various fronts, you know, so to speak. So I think that, you know, that's going to be a good thing for our offensive line. I think we should be okay. Uh, offensively, uh, what, what 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 do you expect the Wildcats to bring to Alexander Stadium on Friday? Well, as soon as you talk Harrison, you know you got to talk about their quarterback. He's their leading rusher. He's their leading thrower. Uh, so I think that he's you know he's kind of the guy that everything you know goes around. Uh, Friday night we saw him punt. We saw him kick kick off. Um, he went in and played defense. You know, toward the end of the game, and so he pretty much does everything for them. Very, very athletic uh, player, but they've got three or four kids that are just like that too. They're they're a really athletic team. They've got a receiver that plays receiver, plays defensive back. Their running back, who's their leading receiver, also plays inside linebacker, and they just they go hard. They yeah. go hard, and I really think that, that that you know one of the big things was is that uh, they they got down twenty one to nothing on two pick sixes, and they just kept coming back, kept coming back, kept coming back. And that's something that, that, we're, that we've stressed already today. We're going to continue to keep stressing. Well, one of the things that I saw um, was an interview that their quarterback did talk about. He talked about the two interceptions and um, how his teammates picked him up and how that part of the, their team really kind of helped that keep going mentality. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I do get a sense from them, and obviously they, they just keep coming at you regardless of what the score is. And that I think that shows to you not just the team but also their coaching. I would agree. I would agree. And every one of their scores has been close this year. They lost in overtime. Uh, all the other games that they've lost have, have been, you know, one touchdown game. So it's it's not like we're playing a team that, hey, they, you know, they got to beat 41 to nothing here, 35 to nothing here, 40. They've been in every game. And based on what we've seen from the earlier games to the later games, you know, they've had quite a bit of improvement. They've, they, you know, their special teams are sound. That's always a good, you know, you know, you know a good a sign of a good football team. You know, they were able to block a punt against Lima Senior and also Lima Senior tried to fake punt and they thwarted the fake punt that Lima Senior had. So they're playing solid special teams. Well it's certainly going to be their conference versus the MVL this week is uh, as you said there will be three matchups that uh, will key both conferences against one another and uh, coaches as you know coming into it everybody's feeling good about themselves and, mm -hmm. and uh, it's uh, really take care of one one week at a time. It is, and I, I think everybody you know knows that. And all of a sudden, you know, it was kind of interesting last week because we were practicing, you know, and it was like a summer day, uh, summer practice. And now this week, all of a sudden, you know, it's it's back on. It's back on. If you don't take care of business, you're 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 staying home. Yeah. And and this team. Has got great chemistry. Uh, they enjoy being around one another. Uh, I, I think overall, everything is it has gone you know well for us at this point. And, th and it, it's an understatement, but that people are not ready to stop playing football. They want to keep on playing football, and I think that's a good sign. Because sometimes we played against teams that you get into some rounds in the playoffs, and, and it looks like they just say, "Hey." We've had a couple of bad things happen to us. It's it's our time. It's time to, time to leave. And I don't think that, that that our players are in that mindset right now. Yeah, no question. I get that sense that this team is uh, 
uh, they're not looking too far ahead, but they are enjoying the moment and they don't want to stop playing, as you've alluded mm -hmm. to. Uh, Coach, uh, we want to talk about our seniors, and, and you talk about our players in particular that, that come to practice and, and come to games week in and week out. Uh, Keegan Patton and Austin Burns, two guys that have played true impacts on the game. Austin, you talk about our special teams. We talked about that throughout several of our shows. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then Keegan as a receiver, uh, not only has he been doing a great job receiving, but you talk about blocking and doing all the extra things. Both of those guys, major impact on the program, but also the season. Definitely. I think both of them uh, are very proud of where they're at right now. Uh, Austin. He's been our punter for the last two years. Led the league last year in punts inside the 10-yard line, which is uh, you know something that's an amazing stat when it happens. Uh, very cool back there. Mm -hmm. I like the fact he's so tall because if we get, get a bad snap, he can get up in the air and get it. If we have a lower snap, and we don't usually have bad snaps, but if that does happen, he's athletic enough to get that ball and, and, and get it putting out of there. So he's just become such a weapon for us. It's unbelievable. And this past year, he kind of took his tight end because he was a part-time tight end for us too. Took, took the, that talent, put him in an H-back, and so he gives uh, our, our normal H-back, uh, Jarrell Lewis gives him a break, and so he's able to go in and play some H-back for us, and then also he's still in a, that rotation at you know, defensive line, you know, and, and we've been healthy on the defensive line, but he would be in that rotation to go through, so he's very versatile. Does his work, you know, love his attitude, you know, he just does a great job for us. And then Keegan has, uh, you know, been a player for us again in the program for three years. And this year, I think, was probably one of the first times he's really got into the whole weightlifting concept and got into to getting in and working out to the point where he took home a trophy in the liftathon. And, yeah, and uh, you know, for for a receiver, you know, usually that's the property of the running backs and defensive backs. And he was in, got his trophy, and you can tell he's got confidence. He's very physical now out there. He blocks like like we expect mm -hmm. wide receivers to block. He runs the jet sweep well, and he does a million intangible things. He's he, he's a you know the perfect player. He's here every day. He's here on time, and, and almost all our players are. But he's always got a smile on his face, and and he's. Always ready to roll, and it, 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 interesting as you probably look at him, you know Burns will probably be a little grumpy tonight because practice went went long, and <laughs> he gonna probably have a smile on his face. So they'll be the two, at the two opposite ends. Well, both of those guys uh, also are multi-sport athletes, play basketball, yeah, both and, basketball players. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and, coach, what, what's it like for you to have not necessarily basketball players, but multi-sport athletes uh, as as a coach? You, you certainly want to encourage your kids to participate as much as you can, but both of those guys are, are very successful in their sport. That, that that's a win for the football program. Oh, it is, and, and you know the fact that we were able to get that weightlifting in during during the, uh, the the school portion of the day, which frees people up to play as many sports as they want, and get other sports into our weight room at the same time is, is a you know a great situation for us. And I think those two guys are you know examples of, of being able to, to to get it on both sides. And you know, pleased that they're that they're with our program. And I know that the, the the weight training everything's going to get them better when they get into the basketball part of it. Well, no doubt those two guys have and will hopefully continue to make a significant impact on the Indians as we trail through playoffs 2020. And Coach, uh, we certainly wish you guys luck against Harrison on Friday night. Thank you very much. We will be back for part two of the senior portion of the program. We will meet Austin. Hopefully he's not too grumpy and we'll meet Keegan here uh, when we return. Welcome to part two of the Bill Nieces Coaches Show. I am now with the senior portion of this program. I'm going to have introduced their names and the positions that they play. Keegan Patton, wide receiver. Austin Burns, H back and punter. Uh, gentlemen, let's talk a little about, before we get into your year, let's talk about the team. Uh, six and oh, undefeated. Uh, we beat Troy, we've beaten Sydney. Uh, we've won the MVL title. Things are going pretty well right now. Uh, what's it like to know that you're part of something like that, Austin? It's pretty, uh, it's pretty amazing. It's good to feel like we're unbeatable, really. I just want to go to the championship and win. One game at a time, though, right? Yeah, one game at a okay. time. 
Keegan, uh, for you, has this been what you thought it was going to be? I mean, going into your senior year, you kind of expect that, hey, I want to have a good year. But has this met your expectation or even exceeded it? It's exceeded my expect expectations completely. What, what, what's, what were your expectations coming into it? I was expecting us to have like a pretty good season, but nothing like this going 6-0 and and winning MVL. Do you, why do you think it's been like this? Uh, we just put in hard work all summer and we were ready for it. Yeah, when you look at this team, you're, you're looking at a, a, a lot of chemistry, a lot of good things. Uh, Austin, one of the things that Coach talks a lot about is special teams. You're a punter. Mm -hmm. uh, you, I can't tell how many times you, you necessarily haven't had to been called on a lot to punt, but when you have, you really put some good you really put some good punts out there. How important is it from your perspective when you get out there that you know that you're an important part of not just the team but strategies in in keeping the game moving and the momentum towards the Indians? Well, when I get out there and I have to punt, and I always either have to like pin them down or get us out of a hole, and I just do my best, kick it as hard as I can, and make sure we got good yardage to do, so we can work with it and stuff, so they don't have like any momentum at all for them and we can just go ahead and go yeah you know Keegan it, it, when it, let, let's talk a little bit about you there, you've been in some third down situations where you've really come up with some big plays and turn them into some big yards uh, I, I'm thinking tip city game in particular is the one that I think of hey wow that was really big um, throughout the year you've had some really big plays how, how does that make you feel once you when you know you get that big play and how, is it feel one of those deals where you feel like you want to rip off your shirt in front of everybody like Superman, or, or or do you take a little bit more of the modest approach? I take a bit more of the modest approach. Yeah. What what game do you think that sticks out to you, and what you have done personally, but has helped the team? I say the Troy game helped the most. Yeah. Was that game for you a breakthrough game? Not 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 you personally, but just as a team. Like, hey, this team can have a chance to have a special season. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Austin. Just from your perspective, what do you think um, the breakthrough game for this team was mentally, and to say, hey, this, hey, we're going to be a pretty good team. I definitely think it was a toy game because I think we came out and made a statement, and then just kept rolling through everyone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, gentlemen, we certainly wish you luck. Um, what what are what are some things here is. is as we get rolling, I know we're talking about football, but you guys are also participating in some other sports. Mm -hmm. Right? We both are hoopers. Yeah. Yeah. Talk a little bit about just not, not basketball, but what's it like being a multi-sport athlete and, and how, how does that help you uh, not, not just be successful in one sport but another, but also academically? Uh, it's... It keeps me in shape and stuff like that for both sports. And I'm always, like, doing something so I'm not, like, being around at the house, not uh, being lazy and stuff like that. And it always makes me keep my grades up so I can keep playing the sport. I'm sure your parents appreciate that. Yeah. How about you, Keegan? It can be challenging, but academic-wise, it helps me keep my grades up and everything. So it helps. Yeah. It, 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 to have something to look forward to, you probably look forward to, an opportunity to compete, but right now you're just looking forward to the next thing, and that is playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's move past playoffs. Let's talk a little bit about uh, what we're going to be doing after grad upon graduation. So we're going to graduate in June. What, what's some of the thoughts that you have might in your mind at this point, Austin? Um, I like to pursue an engineering path, and I'd like to go to UC because they have a really good uh, program for that. Oh, good. I like to go to UC and just do something that involves technology. So it's either engineering or some form of technology like IT. So not only will you be classmates at Pickwood, but you're going to be potential class college classmates at the University of Cincinnati. Gentlemen, we certainly wish you well. We know whatever you guys are going to do, you're going to be highly successful. And thank you for taking time for being with us. And we wish you well on Friday night. Thank you. Thank you. Speaking of Friday night, we will be live and in living color on the Indian Nation Station on YouTube channel. You can catch that here at Alexander Stadium. It will be at 7 p.m. All tickets will be online and must have a code. So you'll have to have that code to buy your tickets online. Otherwise, you can watch it live on the Indian Nation Station. For Keegan and Austin, I am your host, Chip Hare. We will look forward to seeing you next week on the Bill Nieces Coaches Show. Have a good night, everybody.